Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial and we are back with another week and I am super excited. This is going to be an awesome week. This is going to be an awesome remainder of the month and we are going to have some fun. The reason it's going to be a great week is we are going to be having earnings this week. So we're going to continue this week by looking at our economic data in this video. We are going to look at the companies announcing earnings and I'm going to walk through some of the plays and how to set up your account for option season or earning season and how to play options as well as I want to highlight one thing because as you can see on this video over the past week it says that I'm down $65 and there was a huge decrease here at the end of the week on Friday so without further ado I do want to highlight why this decreased because I am actually in terms of overall portfolio value I should be up another $171, $166 and the reason that this is causing this is because as you can see I have a Wayfair put and I bought this and sold one to lock in the gains that I made on it and as you can see this is a two option strategy this happens whenever you buy or sell more than one option on Robinhood and as you can see I've got one of these has jumped all the way up to hundred and twenty eight dollars for that contract or a dollar twenty eight so this happened at the end of the day as you can see for the most part it was trading around 75 even though as you can see I sold it for 59 no one is paying 75 no one is paying 208 and no one is paying 171 and how do I know that why do I know that my account did not drop like it did is because if I go to this hundred and twenty eight dollar put you can see that the reason this is here is the reason this mark is because it is taking the mid point of the bid and the ask and as you can see the ask is two hundred and fifty dollars or two dollars fifty cents however there is zero open interest and there are eleven trades what this makes me believe is that one person paid a lot of money for these trades and no one is buying them back so they are selling them for a high price so they can manipulate it and sell some at a lower price so keep in mind that just when you see something like this does not mean that that is actually the price if this went all the way down to 731 and it expired not in the money because it is a put contract and I don't believe that Wayfair is going to go down to $110 a share despite recent events and the conspiracy theory associated with them I'm not going to talk about it on this video but feel free to check it out just Google Wayfair in the news and you'll see what I'm talking about but it's I just want to highlight that whenever you see something like this that is what you're seeing it does not mean that your account has blown up so that being said you can see some of my options here on the right hand side I've walked through those before and we're gonna to continue to watch these but first things first I do want to dive right into our upcoming earnings and the companies that are going to be walking through this week so rather than use our chart that we have here I'm actually going to hop over to earnings whisper and we're gonna walk through that chart there and we are back so as you can see here on the screen we've got some nice tasty works ads and the only company that will be announcing tomorrow is going to be Pepsi for those of you who are new to options trading who are new to earnings season this is a great website I use earnings whisper a lot because it does a very good job on my TD Ameritrade account it also does a good job of showcasing which companies are going to walk through there but I like to use Robinhood for the purposes of these videos as well as it does have a very user-friendly and a user-friendly platform and I know a lot of you utilize it so with that being said a lot of companies will not do earnings announcements on Mondays and Fridays the reason for that is just because it is a weird time for them and they want people to interact with their company they want to hear the news they want to have that disseminate throughout the week so as well as they want to be able to react to anything over the weekend so with that being said as you can see here on the screen the only company announcing is tomorrow before the bell opens with Pepsi the company to watch following that is going to be coke obviously however I don't think I'm going to be making a play on either Pepsi or coke the reason for that and from our last video we did walk through this is whenever we're looking at companies that move those are the ones that make you money for options and Pepsi and Coke while they can have moves 
I don't think we're going to see them skyrocket up or down, even if they do go up or down. So again, they are two companies that are going to be feeling the effects of the pandemic, but we'll see if the stock reacts that way. So that may be something continuation if you want to watch that tomorrow, but not something I'm going to play personally. Tuesday, though, we get into my bank stocks. As you can see here, we've got JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. Those are the three big ones that I'm going to be watching. I already have calls on JP Morgan. I'm going to be holding those probably all day through tomorrow. If they run up, I'll probably sell one of them. I have two, and I just want to lock in those profits, and we'll see what happens, see how the news disseminates, as well as Bank of America is Thursday, but I think they're going to continue to be a continuation. So I like calls on JP Morgan and puts on Wells Fargo, always puts on Wells Fargo. Those are the companies I'm going to be watching. Again, the only one up here that is still of note is going to be Delta. I just I don't like to play the airline stocks right now. I had a few big wins earlier or during the last earnings season, but right now I'm just not interested in them. So we know it's going to be bad. It's just a matter of how bad is going to define investor optimism, and it's just not a stock that I want to be around right now. So going onwards, we've got Wednesday United Health. I do like this one, but I don't know if they are going to rocket upwards. So they are expecting to grow in revenue, but it's just not a company that I think is traditionally a big mover, as well as it's an expensive stock. It trades north of $200 a share, and that being said, the options are very expensive. So we'll see. You see a lot of other banks up here. It's going to be a lot of financials this week. However, I'm not playing any of these, although I do think that Goldman Sachs is going to be a big mover, a big trading platform, a big investment platform, but I still don't think I'm going to be playing them. So if we go on to Thursday, and this will be the last one that I'll really be looking at, I like Domino's because they are a big mover. However, a lot of that has been priced in. They move a lot. So it's going to be one that's interesting to watch. I also like Taiwan Semiconductor as another big one, just because you've seen Intel, you've seen AMD and Nvidia have been moving a lot. So be watching that one, that TSM. But the ones from this list, Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson, Domino's and Taiwan Semiconductor are going to be the ones that I'm watching. Domino's is just very expensive. Go check out those premiums because those can be big. And then again, we've got more of the financials, but I'm really not going to be playing any of these personally. So these are some of the stocks that we're going to be watching this week. And now I'm going to take you to the financial data to be watching this week as well, or the economic data to be released. And as you can see, we've got the next week's major U.S. economic reports starting tomorrow with just the federal budget. That tends to not move the market. CPI or Consumer Price Index coming out on Tuesday. That is something that people are going to be watching. I'm going to be interested to see if the market really reacts to that one just because in some areas of the country we're seeing a lot of good healthy economic data. However, the end of July we were seeing some parts of the country close back down. So I don't know if that's going to be super exciting. The big one this week is going to be that beige book on Wednesday. And what the beige book is, is it's essentially everyone in the Fed, all the different reserve boards, are going to be saying what they anticipate to happen from an economic standpoint going forward. This is a report that they issue eight times a year. It does have the capability to move the market. I don't know if it's going to be in a positive or negative way. We've seen a lot of really good economic data lately. But that's one that we want to see, hey, is this going to be good or not? The import price index is going to be bad. Empire State Index, I believe, is not going to be great. I do want to see the industrial production. That's one that the whole market will not move on, but some pieces of the market, mainly manufacturing, will move up. We also have initial jobless claims as well as continuing jobless claims. Those two are going to make the market move as well as retail sales and auto sales are going to make the market move or rather certain areas move. So be watching Walmart for this one and then autos, any of the auto manufacturers aside from Tesla. Tesla apparently only goes up. So be watching those and then housing starts. Think your DR Horton, think your LGI, Zillow, Redfin for these. So we'll be watching those. So now let's go back to our Robinhood platform. So what are the stocks that we're gonna be looking at? As you can see on the upcoming earnings, the really some of the ones that I'm going to be watching are already up here. I do like Netflix as well, but it's very, very expensive. 
But the ones I'd like to see, I like JP Morgan Chase. I've got calls. Mine are at the end of the month. Again, get some time on these. Do not play weeklies. I repeat, do not play weeklies. It's a high return, high risk, not a huge return, where these are lower risk and high return. So check them out. Again, this is a far out the money one. I don't know if they're going to move up that much. Probably going to sell one out tomorrow, make this play free. But I like the JP Morgan chases, so that's a good one. The other one that I like a lot is going to be that TSM. The reason for that is, as you can see, we did kind of see the pullback from the semiconductor or the conductors. Again, look at this. Over the past three months, we've seen 32%. You guys know I always look at NVIDIA, so I really like this one. But look at even just the, the options for just this end of the week. You can see that they are already at all-time highs. I don't know if they're going to continue to build up. I think a lot of that is priced in. With that being said, one of the ways that we can kind of do well or make a trade off of these is we can say, hey, if we anticipate it to go up, we can sell puts and go down here. So if I say it's not going to go below $60, what I can do is I can buy puts and calls. So I've got that and then I can buy one down here. You can see I'll get paid $10. However, that puts you at risk of assignment where I have to hold the money to charge the difference between these two. So that's one way that we can look at that. Not necessarily one I'm going to, but I am going to have this on my watch list, going to be watching it. But the big ones are going to be the banks this week and then Domino's, Netflix, and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. That's what I'm watching. That's what I want to check out. If you like anything or you have some plays, please comment those down below. I do like to see what you are watching and I am interested to know. So thank you for your time today. And if you have any thoughts, comments, or ideas, let me know. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.